Right. Hey everyone, welcome to the Friendly Frequencies podcast. So we've got a special guest today. I'm so excited to have a guest in first time in forever. I was just saying that I have had a guest on here and I'm just so grateful because Brett, you have actually made a big impact in my life, even though this is our first time having a one-on-one conversation. But uh before I get you to jump in, I just want to start off by saying like why you're why you're here for me, like why I invited you here and what impact you had on me, which is that we met at a music festival and you were the host of the workshop, a womb, uh, it was about a womb healing ceremony of sorts. Mm-hmm. And it was it was so powerful for me because I only ended up coming to the last 10 or 15 minutes and I and our mutual friend was there and uh, we were going to go together and you know I had recently gone through uh, trauma within my womb and uh, I knew that I needed to be there and I just came from like a really high energy workshop and like really playful and fun and then I came to the last bit of yours and it was just a deep uh deep drop in of women in a deep meditation holding our wounds every like there's people crying and it's in a red tent and I and I entered it and I just dropped in right away and Mm. felt that space that really potent energy of one being in a red tent for the first time in 10 years and I think Mm. I may have shared this in I think it was your workshop that I shared this in which is that 10 years before I had been in a red tent and I was ashamed and I didn't want to be there and I was basically dragged there and I refused to participate in the ceremony of having my period for the first time and I was like I don't want people to know about this I'm embarrassed about Mm. I didn't want anything to do with being a woman I wanted to be still a little girl I didn't want to grow up and so I had, you know, a lot of things to work through around that. And I've been working through it for a long time. And a lot of the podcast listeners know I've gone through a pretty deep sexual awakening and still am in my life and my journey. And I really want. And so when I was there, I, you know, for the first time being in a red tent, I was so proud to be there. And then feeling that space was so powerful and mm-hmm. uh, around all of these women who have like we all have this portal inside of us and like I now can feel how powerful that is and I'm not ashamed I'm so proud and also to feel the you know the absence of you know like you know to be vulnerable and share like I had an abortion recently before that and it's not something I've shared on the podcast but it's like it's real and we were just talking about like <laughs> you know we we like how I'm like I'm a chronic oversharer but like Mm. moment I kind of want to be (laughs) Mm -hmm. and so like I was healing from that and the healing from a breakup where it came from and like it was really it was deep stuff and yeah yeah it was a really powerful moment for me and I really have never stopped actually noticing my womb since then like I really like I touch it every day I um and I just like I notice it now and I yeah. never did before and so thank you for that and like I know I haven't even given you a moment to speak yet I want to hear from you like <laughs> you don't even know who you are yet but this is like I guess I just had to pre- jump right in there and just tell you because I was just excited to, sh- to share this with you like that you had such an impact on me and my journey so thank you and mm. welcome to the podcast <laughs> what an mm. intro yeah <laughs> who are you give, give us some deets <laughs> thank you Carmen that was beautiful what mm. a beautiful way to be here and to learn that that is very much my prayer is that every woman has that kind of here with self here with womb kind of relationship and yeah that is a big part of my life's work is permeating womb wisdom and kind of what I call the mother tongue like reclaiming the potency and the power and the beauty of the great mother 
the divine feminine, the body wisdom, the feminine that goes beyond gender, but the emotionality, the intuition, the sensuality, the felt sense, like the depth that has been very much exiled in our culture. You are frozen. Are you there? Oh, Open. you're back. I'm back. Sorry about that. Okay. My, my thing dropped off. Potency and power were the last words. Heard. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks so, so much. When we, when we can edit. <laughs> yeah, there we go. And we're all about imperfection oh. here. So yeah, <laughs> exactly. All right. Let it be real. Yeah, um, literally. Yeah. Yeah. Potency and power. But um, mm. about me, I mean, where do I begin? Can you give me some prompts some questions? <laughs> That's yeah, a great yeah. way to to kind of dive in to share a bit more about myself and my mm. my body of work yeah yeah I really wanted to ask you about your journey and kind of the breadcrumbs that have led you to where you are and mm -hmm. if you yeah what are those key moments for you and you know to get to this place of you know the way I would explain the way that, that I see you is you're you're a womb whisperer you're a womb mm. whisperer like you and I think what did you say it was um oh, oh I just had this flashback of like you giving like womb kisses at the end you're oh, like, like yeah, womb yeah. Kisses. It's like not like blowing a kiss from your mouth like a blowing it from mm. your little I love that so and that just encapsulates it and um, yes yeah and so to to get to this place of being a yeah. a womb man <laughs> womb man yeah absolutely uh, yeah, how did you get here I can speak to that for sure yeah it's always like should I just do the basic like intro of like hi, my name's this. And I'm like, I prefer <laughs> to just be in the conversational. Yeah, yeah. Um, Go deep. As wow. You know. There's so many doorways to the journey. I mean, I can connect to what you shared about that first bread tent. Mm -hmm. um, I really felt like, hey, one second, my audio is just a bit strange. It's all good. Sounds good on my end. My phone is hearing something but it might be my phone's connected to all right take your time okay yeah I remember my first woman's circle and it's always like at least at least for what I've noticed on the path like there's often that like rock bottom or that doorway into like there has to be something deeper and for me it was um a breakup I was probably 21 at the time and went through my first like deep heartbreak and soon after went through a uh, pretty intense trauma in my family of almost losing a close member of my family to suicide um following that like spiritual awakening and that's kind of I was like weaving in my life prior to those two events so it was like what I feel like great spirit was preparing me for all these big experiences that were ahead of me and I was learning Reiki and I was going to more spiritual events and um, this specific woman's circle, a good friend of mine invited me to it and I had no Facebook at the time. So this was before I was like that immersed on Instagram and stuff like that. So Facebook was like the main way to learn about events. And I deleted my Facebook at the time to not see all of the memories with my ex and just kind of unplug from social media. So it was very old school in terms of like, she's like, come to this event. I'm like, I don't know what it's about. She's like, come anyways. And I went to this beautiful backyard, downtown Toronto after my nine to five job at a preschool. I was a preschool teacher and yeah, I was like 21 or 22 and I was just blown away by what felt like a way more like embodied spirituality like it wasn't a workshop where we were learning about like chakras and spirituality from the mind but we were doing things like 
belly dancing and touching our bodies and emoting and sounding <clears throat> and it was under the full moon and mm -hmm. that night I was just like wow like this is like this is everything this feels mm -hmm. like the precipice of such it felt like an initiation in many ways where I had all these like micro moments on the path of being into Reiki and all these other aspects of spirituality my mother is more holistic so I kind of got a doorway into that world through my mom mm -hmm. she knew about things like that when I learned and I was like mm -hmm. I thought it was uncool when I was younger and then I began to find it on my own and she was like you know I drink kombucha right I make it mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like now it's like trending um but yeah that woman's circle was just so pivotal and from that moment, there are so many ways that life just began to show me like breadcrumbs. And I believe like all these other doorways to, in essence, my womb, my womb awakening. And I believe that the womb awakening, it's like we go through many different awakenings to the wisdom of the womb. So it's not like the womb is like physically awakening it's like we're awakening to that power and that wisdom and that world that lives in our body right mm -hmm. so I feel like all those events following that night it was like slowly leading me to to the womb and to what I feel like is a huge part of my my life's work and purpose and um alongside that my own kind of like ailments I had to move through as well I had a lot of um pelvic tension in my earlier life of just like feeling like life wasn't safe like a like a hypertension I saw a physiotherapist for my pelvis things like that and um yeah there's just like it's it's wild how we'll have these events and we'll have these experiences and it's not until we're conscious like it's like it's kind of like right there in front of us like we maybe have the mirrored experience from another woman where she was like you know this is what led me here and it's like whoa that was my experience too like I was I guess having a womb awakening or I was having a um dark night of the soul or I was having this that that it's like we we develop the literacy right but we're often mm -hmm. already living the experience before we have the words for it mm -hmm. so every time I talk about what led me to the now it's like there are so many different ways it all like magically weaved together and um but a big part of it was being in initiatory spaces like women's circles and being around it being exposed to it um and even yeah my own body like having what I call like the womb knocking from the inside and so often women will go through something sometimes loud that pulls them into their body whether that be like you were sharing before you know um different aspects of sexual trauma or abortion or ailment where you know they're at this point where it's like they're being told they have to have their womb removed or they're being told they have to have a surgery and then they begin to think of like other holistic doorways mm. um and sadly that is often the I guess the first door the first gateway to womb remembrance and my passion is that more women can find the womb and find this path and really have a whole health a whole deep relationship with their womb their body their feminine from an early age so the more women that are deepening in awareness and connection to their feminine and their body if those women decide to have children little girls or even in their community that wisdom reaches many reaches the young ones and that's what I believe is also the feminine lineage it's that we're all kind of reclaiming remembering reminding each other and when I learn I pass that down and when you learn you pass that down and it reminds me of the symbolism of the circle and that being such a huge um 
a symbol in a lot of feminine mythology and a lot of cosmology, a lot of like we look at the the moon, we look at the roundness of, you know, the woman when she's pregnant, the breasts, like the anatomy, like the roundness, the fullness, the earth. And it reminds me of how that is lineage. Like we're a circle. We're here to be leveled with each other. We're here to pass on knowledge. And we're here to kind of co-weave a new world. So mm. that is a bit about my path. <laughs> oh, <laughs> wow. Yeah, I need a, we need a breath after that one. That's yeah. <laughs> beautiful. Oh, my goodness. Mm. <sighs> well, you just answered, I think, all my questions in one. <laughs> that <was> beautiful. <laughs> yeah, thanks for going so deep with that. As, yeah um because that you know it answers the why and the how and the what mm. and the who and what and I have so many follow-up questions so yeah <laughs> <laughs> so many things you said in there I resonate with personally and I think that so many women can um there's some things that I'd say every woman can re- relate with which is uh when you're talking about the um when a woman speaking about her truth about her body mm. and struggles and like when you realize that all of us women have sexual trauma all of us women have uh w- we all have I'm actually just starting to learn about like womb trauma or birthing trauma and I actually don't know yeah. enough anything yeah. but I'm reading a book about it right now wow. and, and uh, how we all have that and there's a trauma yeah. that comes from being born and uh you know and so there's that but when I think what I can resonate most with, which is the way that my sexual awakening started was because I listened to podcasts like this. I listened to podcasts and read books about sex. And I heard a lot of people speaking about the subject and women speaking about how they also couldn't have an orgasm. They also felt completely switched yeah. off until they like learned that they could and that kind of thing. And I just remember and I'll never forget the day that I realized that I can learn these things. I'm not just like asexual. Oh no, I guess I I have to force myself to have sex with men the rest of my life because that's what I have to do. No, actually I can, I can, I can learn this stuff, you know, Mm -hmm. we can can learn to squirt. It's one of my episodes on here because I had to be very true around that. That was like a 2024 (laughs) goal of mine. Oh my god! Share more on that later. If I have a call. Yeah, I was gonna say, did you did you achieve that? Okay, I made I a whole podcast. On this thing. Oh, perfect. So we can talk about squirting, and I would be so yeah. happy if you shared that that journey. Yeah. Um, if you want to, please do. Um, yeah. So there's like that. I just really appreciate and uh, like this kind of conversation, right? That's why I appreciate it, and that's why I want more women on here to speak about this because it's mm-hmm. awakening something. It's awakening the womb of another woman just to hear this right now, Absolutely. and just for them to be aware of their womb, just like I was. Absolutely, in your workshop, right? Yeah. And it's such a it's such an important thing. Like I bumped into a woman at an event after and live in, and she came up to me and she was like. I went to your workshop. It was like my first time learning about this stuff. Like, is this new? That's what she asked. She's like, is, is this new? And Mm -hmm. like, obviously it's, it's not new. Right. Like, but that question really stuck with me because it's, it is this, like, there is a global womb awakening happening. Like there's so much more language and awareness around the womb the last few years. I think, especially since like for me, it was around like 2019 that I began learning more about this kind of stuff. Mm. But um, it just showed me how needed it is where someone's asking, is this new, right? Like, mm. and how beautiful it is that it's it's reaching so many, like you said, whether it be through a podcast or a workshop at a festival or just in passing in conversation, you know, it's it's really like that permeating of just like a little seed being dropped and yeah it's really special Mm, yeah yeah and I I just had a question drop on me just in this just in this moment which is that I'm I'm actually not clear on the difference and like the relationship between the womb and the cervix like are these the same thing and I know Mm. that 
yeah like how how related are these two areas and I'd love to know yeah some people may like there's different like different perspectives on this some people say the womb is like the entire um from like the uterus cervix fallopian tubes ovaries the way that I learned it is the womb is the uterus the womb is the home that womb is the like our first home we live in the uterus and our mothers in the womb space um I've learned in like a more womb cosmology expression is that cervix is like the the doorway it's like the waiting room so Mm -hmm. The cervix actually selects the like the the sperm comes up into the cervix and it kind of waits there Mm -hmm. and then I believe the wisdom of the womb decides if it will come up into the sacred slate the sacred place like the womb space um but in essence they are connected right like that is the cervix is the the root of the uterus right so um different people have different ways of seeing it I do see the womb as being I guess a bit of both it's the uterus but it could also be the greater whole and that's mm-hmm. in itself a metaphor for the womb how the womb is yes a physical organ and it's also the entire ecosystem of the planet and it's also the cosmic womb like the big bang it's like the star has birth in the dark void and there are so many metaphors for the womb yeah mm-hmm. Yeah, I and it was actually not too long ago, like in the last few months that I had this realization. Uh, I don't know if it was spoken to me or if I just came to me that just this like, just finally like, really just it dropping on me that our mm-hmm. our vaginas, our wombs uh, are the portals from the phys- from the from the astral realms, from the supernatural world to the physical world. This is literally, portal, literally. right? And it's like, like I, literally. I'm surprised. Yeah, I'm surprised I didn't know sooner, but it's like it's just like it shows though, like how much um the feminine and the womb has been devalued and has not been centered because it's 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 true. Many people are like, oh yeah, that's pretty powerful. I'm like, I know that's why I'm like so passionate. Like this is (laughs) this is why we're alive. Like everyone has come from a womb, and in the womb religion, they spoke about how the or like in wombs studies they talk about how there's the cosmic womb the earth womb and the eden womb which is the woman's womb and as women we are the the bridge between the cosmic womb above and the earth womb that we live within and it's like we're this chalice this bridge between the upper world and the lower world and there's a point in life where that was just known and respected and honored Mm. yeah and and it's no doubt that you know I, and I I wanted to ask about this like this what is the womb in western western society matrix terms and then what is the womb in actuality to you mm. like and you have touched on this already but like yeah. I just just that that uh this versus that how different it is and and how like where is the and like where did the truth get buried and why? And I think we all yeah. kind of know the answer, which is that they don't want us to be tapped into this, right? They mm-hmm. don't want us to have our power, in, and and mm-hmm. that is why the whole and it's why our sexuality and everything has been uh, dampened and not yeah. taught to us because it's too powerful. Absolutely, and, you know. Yeah. yeah. So that's a great question. There's so much I could muse from that. Um, I mean, the first thing that comes to my very esoteric mind is like, so like the womb is the original matrix, matri, like the 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 womb, the 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 matrix, like she is this cross kind of like weaving world where anything that lives within a woman's womb births you know you give a woman a sperm into the womb and she can create life you plant a seed into the earth and a garden can bloom and an entire ecosystem that protects that garden like the way that um everything kind of weaves together like that is expression of the womb right and when women are connected and men and all beings are aware of the power of the womb 
we are aware of how much we can create in this life, you know? So being plugged into the literal power center and the creational center um, is a very scary thing in a world that is really looking to create a life for us and have us follow a way of living that is more convenient and more profitable and more whatever their agenda is, you know, it's like to be deeply rooted in womb wisdom, earth wisdom, the wisdom of our own heart and intuition and spirit, that is some real power. And I feel like the womb in the matrix world, you know, it's like many think of the womb and they think of pregnancy. They think of motherhood. Like I remember a good friend of mine when I was in my early 20s, I think it was like 20 too right before that big awakening and she was talking about the womb and reading about um this book called it's called queen afwa wrote it it was about the womb and the divine feminine and sacred woman is what it was called just reading this book and i just thought it was like oh the womb like i'll think about that when i'm a mother like i remember that thought right yeah. she was like you know drinking herbs and like thinking more about the womb and it just wasn't really in my sphere so directly even though I was going to some events and stuff and women's events like it wasn't really an embodied awareness and um yeah I just was like the womb's for pregnancy the womb's for a baby the womb is for a period like I didn't remember the like profound spiritual cosmic creational knowing and the reality that is undeniable that the womb is the seat of our power and I personally believe the seat of the soul because like you were sharing before like me whatever the creation story you believe it's like something comes through the woman a woman's body whether it be a star spirit light you know and it creates life and it is like clear that that is that that same energy whether we're deciding to have a baby or not lives in our womb we can conceive gestate and birth and um remembering that about the womb shifts your entire life when we remember just how much power we have and we bridge it in with our heart our sensuality our sexuality our practices the way we walk in life everything changes and it's not always convenient to remember how powerful we are as women. It takes a lot of um, wielding our energy and really being, yeah, the womb is cunning. She's honest. She shows us what is not nourishing and to have a vital, healthy womb physically, but also to have a nourishing life externally it takes a lot of listening to our intuition our womb's voice and trusting its guidance and that's that's my body of work in essence is guiding women to that voice and that relationship and really being in practice of being like an apprentice of your own body and your own womb and that wisdom within mm, yeah thank you I and I really want to know more about that because as much as I, I mentioned that I'm aware of my womb, which is, mm -hmm. that's amazing in itself, right? And I, and I am the whole time I'm kind of like, I know that I'm going to learn the language of my womb over, oh, as I get to know it better, right? As I get to know yeah. it more. And I want to know also, like, what, how, because I don't, I don't really feel anything, right? And I don't, I'm not always, I haven't always been very in touch with I've only just been getting in touch with like, what is my body telling me? You know, yeah. uh, our our mutual friends, uh, Matt and Lily, they talk about a sacral yes. Is it a sacral yes? Mm -hmm. And they're getting yes. me onto that. And I'm just like, but as a generator, I, I definitely relate to that one. Yeah. yeah. I'm a many gen. So I'm just like, <laughs> nice. a sacral yes. But I'm like, so they're making, they're, I can see them. They're making sacral yeses and sacral no's yeah. all the time. And I'm just like, how do you do that? Right. And so it's mm. similar to a womb. I feel like a womb yes. Oh, yeah. I, how sure. do I, yeah, you know, how do I feel that? I don't know what it feels like yet. Yeah. And like, how can I tap more into that? Yeah, that's a beautiful question. And, you know, it's like anything, 
that I feel births from truth. It's like, we can't force it. We can't be like, come on, like, give me the thing. Like, I feel like in nature, like the womb is like a divination tool. And I don't like to call the womb a tool. It's kind of not the best wording, but like, Mm -hmm. um, the more that we, the more that we build a relationship with it, like anything, whether it be like a lover or we're reading a book or we're studying and it's like we're investing time and energy to learn this thing right it um it blooms the relationship blooms it's reciprocal so the more that we spend time with our womb and that could be as simple as putting our hands on our womb in the morning like you were even speaking to since the workshop just like feeling it touching your womb more um it can be I believe like being in more and more spaces where that kind of conversation and consciousness is is, is present, like women's circles, womb ceremonies, um, learning. Like I find the first gateway often is the mind where we're developing like a safety in the mind so that we can go deeper in the body. So reading books about the womb, which I can share some recommendations after too. Yeah. Um, But yeah, really, like I call it like feeding Kindle to the fire, like putting energy towards it, putting, you know, letting your womb know, which, you know, is an animate consciousness, I believe, like letting her know, like, I want to deepen in this relationship. I want to be on the same team. I want to learn you. I want to know you. I want to deepen here because in essence, the womb is our it is our essence like it is our I believe our original self before the world has influenced us and taught us who we are it's like I feel the womb does hold our original essence our original innocence our original self um it's like the home of that essence so it's really like building a slow burn relationship with that part of us and seeing what blooms I really think even dream weaving is a big part with the womb like before you go to sleep letting your kind of deep consciousness know I I want to get to know my womb and you'll be amazed I I've experienced like what she'll show you I've had dreams where I've actually gone like descended through my inner vision literally into my physical womb and have like seen my organs and seen what was off and things like that and there's so many different portals with the womb womb journeying I'd highly if you've never done a womb journey that's a big part of my work it's really like going into the womb and receiving visuals um knowings retrieving soul fragments and really just getting to know that consciousness Mm, wow yeah I definitely want to I want to learn more about that Mm -hmm. and I also I mean on a for me I've been deeply connecting to the womb through the bathtub especially Mm, lately especially yeah I've always been a bath yeah I've always been a bath girl especially in like the last four years uh but yeah. it's, like just in the last even just in the last week like I was taking like four like two two hour baths in a day because I wasn't feeling oh, I was sick this week it's yeah. been transcendent like that baths. <laughs> yeah it's the state where I can get in to an instant meditation and instant connection to God no yeah. my thoughts are not really present at all and I am transported to the womb and it feels yes. it instant, you know, and mm. that has been so powerful for me. It's actually been like pretty, it's pretty life changing. Like it's like almost yeah. like I think I would rather be in the bath most of my day and just like do my work from there. And I actually yeah. have been doing my work from the bath. Oh my gosh, we should do the podcast from the bath. <gasps> okay, we'll do a part two. <laughs> part two bath styles. I love that. I love it. Yeah. Wow. Thank you for sharing all of those. Like, uh, so beautiful how you were transported back to the womb in your dream you said yeah it was yeah. like in in the dream and you remember it because mm-hmm. I have a hard time remembering my dreams often and that's mm-hmm. something that I've been really w- wanting to work with uh is because dreams are dreams are the language of God 
you know so yeah. you know so I just read in a book and I'm like hell yeah that's true yeah and I've been working on remembering my dreams for years and it's it's a it's a process it's not easy mm. and I, I, I wonder like important. does yeah like does womb does this connection to the womb even <clears throat> help with that maybe it helps mm-hmm. you with your dreams right and vice versa mm. <clears throat> like so one thing that really blew my mind is when I learned that for the first six months when we're in the womb in our mother's wombs we're actually in a dream time consciousness so it's before the frontal lobe develops in our brain it's like this more shamanic state we're swimming in and yeah most of our womb time we were in that dream time consciousness so <clears throat> when we come to earth as little sweet little beings it's like we have that bridge between worlds still we have that like imaginative um kind of portal consciousness to the other side still and I do really feel like connecting to our dreams supports us in connection to the womb and then the womb like it's kind of a a vice versa right um I feel like the dream realm is a really beautiful way to like I was sharing getting to know aspects of our our womb and what's being held in the library of our womb and um, when I speak about womb consciousness I often speak about how to experience womb consciousness it's like we can like you said go in the bath where we feel like we're again in the womb we're floating or the ocean even right where there's like no sense of gravity we are immersed in the waters and other ways of that consciousness is like going deep in nature and nature bathing and feeling oneness again with the great mother um it could also be through making love and being in that like deep trance meditation where when we are opening our womb in union with another person we're inviting that person also into womb consciousness and the deeper i've awakened to my own womb and have had this like deep relationship with her when I'm with a partner he also can experience that world and this is like a whole other tangent but you can also go into how potent and revealing it becomes of what we are seeding in our womb so a partner and them coming into our womb field and then we can magnify and multiply whatever they're bringing into us in the external world. So if we're making love with a partner who is, I guess we can go with the route of like disorganized and not in integrity and kind of messy all over the place. Like we may begin to see that in our external life as well, or we may reflect that more into his world and it'll be more magnified because mm-hmm. the womb by nature, like I was sharing it, it, it births, it magnifies, it creates, like the seed being planted, it births something. And um, yeah, so trance meditation, <laughs> that's another, but um, like mm-hmm. trance meditations, baths, making love, nature, there are so many ways to connect to the womb consciousness. Shared a whole bunch in that little <laughs> second. Yeah. So take what you, go know, what you right? want from there. Yeah. right where do we go from there I would so say much. yeah I would say I would love to hear more on the topic of sex and the womb space and yeah you know that they're so related yet I know they're mm-hmm. it's almost like to, to me I can I can imagine it kind of like tantra and sex Absolutely. right they're yeah. so related yet they aren't each, they are mm. each other right but they are they're they're you know they're like a, a woman in her womb they are yeah and different, they're, but they're not yeah. right and uh, I would love to hear more about how how has your journey been with your you know if you if you're comfortable talking about your sex life like and how yeah. has that transformed through your womb wisdom absolutely so <clears throat> wow where to go from here I mean I when I went through what I'd call like my second kind of big womb awakening, where the way I describe it is I just became a lot more conscious of my womb, the physical experience of my womb, um, 
the more cosmological, like learning about my womb with a mentor I was working with. Um, I was going through a very cathartic relationship at the time. Like it was a very like push pull. I knew it wasn't healthy for me, but I was very in what I call like love addiction where it was like, we know it's not right, but it's like this deep allure and there's things to learn and it's like this enmeshment. So after that relationship, um, I went through a long window of celibacy. I devoted, I, I saw online that this woman did 13 moons of conscious celibacy. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> like that sounds super potent, 13 yeah. moon cycles. Mm. And so following that separation, I devoted to that. And even in that relationship, um, if it wasn't for my deepened relationship with my womb, I, I think it would have been a lot harder to exit that relationship because I felt like I had this new devotional aspect in my life. I had this new place to pour my love, my focus. I was like, it felt like I'd wake up and I was just so hungry to learn more about the feminine mistress, mystic, blah, 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 mysteries and mysticism. <laughs> and, um, I was so excited to learn about, um, at the time I was reading this book called The Sophia Code and I was learning about the different divine feminine Senate masters like Isis and Kuan Yin and Mary Magdalene. And I just felt like I, I had this doorway to deepen. And so that two, what was first 13 months turned into two years, almost, I think, yeah, two years of conscious celibacy. So from like, I think it was 25 to like 28 wow maybe almost no it was like two and a half years I was celibate and I was still in connection I had some really beautiful um, experiences with men I still went on some dates and whatnot but during that window of time um, and also having a background already in sacred sexuality and tantra and energy sex and sexual shamanism like prior to that window um, I was able to really experience incredibly potent um connections like I was with a, a friend of mine and simply hugging I had like deep um just like <clears throat> I was so essentially online I was so aware and attuned to my energy body and that entire window of time celibate that was like a huge part of my womb awakening of really learning about what I felt like when there was nothing coming into my field. There was nothing like in such a deep way, like in a sexual way, um, seeding my, my energy field. And so following that relationship or that relationship in that window, um, after that, it, I, I felt like this, this deep longing, like if I can't be taken deeper then I can take myself with a man. Like, I don't even want to be with a partner. Like if a man can't, if we can't go deep and we can't together um, open that realm of consciousness and depth and union and, um, you know, very tantric, very deep opening to love, <clears throat> kind of lovemaking, <clears throat> I wasn't interested. And that's still very much in my sphere, like the notion of if a man can't take me deeper than I can take myself or that I can go with my own body and with God and with my own inner union, it doesn't feel as appealing to me as per se, maybe in my earlier twenties where I was more explorative and had a more um, experiential sex life where I was like, oh, I wanna try these things and I wanna have experiences where now it's like, I'm on a mission. I want to build. I want to be mindful with this potent energy. And I still want to have fun and explore and, you know, feel super good in my body and have these experiences. But I'm a lot more discerning and intentional with how I share that now. Um, and yeah, it's been quite the journey. I 
was on a Tantra commune when I was in, about 23. I was doing a work away in um, Portugal and a friend of mine who spent time on this commune was like, check out this commune in the south of Portugal. So we got there and I stayed for just about a month and I got to go to multiple Tantra festivals and it was my first doorway into the depth of just sexual expression and um, nudity, like just people dancing naked and having public experiences and being in full bodied ecstasy. And um, yeah, it was like, I guess I, I, I experienced so much, I saw so much in my earlier 20s, in my earlier life, that I feel like, I, I feel like I long for depth now. I long for um, deep union. Mm. Yeah, so that, I guess, speaks to some aspects of my sexual journey. Um, Okay, get more specific if you want some mm. stories. I got some. But I'll share that with you for now. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for that. I I I'm kind of blown away by the similarity of our mm. of us. Yeah. In so many ways. <laughs> so first off, I mean, she spits bars and she she, she spits <laughs> bars and, and I'm not gonna put you on the spot and make you do it on the podcast like it was done to me but uh, <laughs> but I love to freestyle yeah <laughs> yes and uh and just when you know just so many things like we we're both raised by conscious mothers and how much that I can tell there is a deep a depth that you have and I can tell that you're raised by a conscious mother you know and it's mm. just, and it's, it's such a blessing isn't it because there's so yeah. much that we don't have to unlearn and um so that was one other thing I just resonated with you. And then right now, I mean, you're talking about conscious celibacy at 25. Well, I'm 25 and I'm in conscious celibacy right oh now. Oh my gosh, that's so, amazing. Yeah, wow. thanks. And I I haven't set a time, a time frame yeah. uh, based on many circumstances I won't get into, but it's uh it's it's been a beautiful journey and I'm so grateful that I've gotten uh and I I haven't actually done an episode about it and I want to because it's such a powerful journey for me to be holding this energy within myself and still sharing energy with people but just not sexually because sexually and r romance romance and sex are so beautiful and they're kind of everywhere I go and I don't, I'm, I'm sure you you've kind of felt this before because you're tapped in you're you have high self-esteem you're living in higher purpose like that is a very sexy thing and mm. that, and it's very easy to find people who are also in that vibration and it's very easy to connect with people and I find that wherever I go there's always someone where I'm like mm -hmm. oh wow we could go there oh yeah yeah and, yeah. and usually <laughs> I do and usually I do explore that stuff because especially I've been traveling for a few years and yeah I've been in this me mode too. of like, yeah short-term relationships it's taught me so yeah. much <laughs> and it's it's really helped me along my journey and right now especially because I'm home in Vancouver I mean I'm visiting where I will always kind of come back here and so I'm yeah. careful with who I'm sharing that even though there are people here that I could share that with but I am also aware that of the long-term impact of that and also yeah. also just like the right now whereas I'm focused on one healing my womb healing my mm. emotions from this breakup that I just had and yeah, this absolutely. has been that period of healing myself and holding this energy within me mm. uh, and 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 putting it all into the vision all into the higher yes. purpose into into what am I yes. bringing into the world right and I think it's such a vision for me and such a a deep message that I have is that young women I really want to see young women that not necessarily going celibate if they don't if they don't feel that that's their path but to yeah. remember that this is this energy we have this vortex we have at 25 or you know give or take mm, 29 you know, over here but yeah yeah exactly like give or take five ten years I mean it really you know you need to put an age on it but yeah just being a young woman of with you know with this 
time that we have and this energy it's so powerful and to Absolutely. not uh not to, to not be looking for the next person yeah. to share with right Oof, it's like, remember chills. like we're so yeah. many chills. like mm. yeah because I look at my 20s like I'm turning 30 in two months exactly actually mm -hmm. and um I reflect on how much of my 20s I spent dating someone or recovering from a, a relationship or pining for a relationship like looking seeking and I think it is such a natural expression of the maiden or you know of our early life where we're looking to learn about ourselves through the experience of another but what you're speaking to I think is so important to feel that deep inner wholeness and that like almost like guardianship and like preservation of our essence and to know that it's not meant to be free that it's not meant to just be like yeah you want you want to experience me okay like like mm -hmm. being really in touch with what we deeply long for what we deeply desire what we're worthy of and also not just focusing on a relationship like it's not I like when I found my soul purpose for example like it was a new place to pour this love and devotion because I do feel like when we have so much um, energy and vitality and excitement and sensuality and eros and curiosity about life, it's like we're looking for somewhere to park that. We're looking for somewhere to, um, to utilize that. And oftentimes we park it with a person, right? And it's like a very easy way to like exchange and you know, I'll give you this, you give me that, like, and when we find what we deeply um, are devoted to, right, or whether it be, like, art, or a higher purpose, or, you know, the, the protecting the planet, and supporting others, and so many different avenues, it's, like, we're not hyper fixated on the relationship, on love in that sense and I think it's so important for young women especially where we've been taught to get so much validation through the external gaze um, and the external you know a lot of us also coming from at least in my experience coming from parents that were very young and I didn't grow up close to my father having that like wow Brittany you're doing amazing you're such a beautiful young woman like I didn't hear that from my father so it was like seeking for that in partners seeking for that solar energy to validate right where um yeah we we give a lot of energy and power seeking that from outside yeah yeah exactly i and i think that as much as i've been on this very independent journey and i'm mm. and it's something that i'm, I'm proud of myself for for going and, and doing this I also noticed that I've been, uh, I have actually been basically going relationship to relationship, even though, and it doesn't feel that way because they're all short-term relationships. They all have an end date, even though they'll always be my friends, right? But there's only a, they know going into this with me that there is a period of time that we're together and yeah. we can go deep and I'm not afraid to go real deep, but uh but it's not staying like you're not my forever partner right now. Like I'm moving on. Yeah. This. And uh, so it always felt like I had this independence because, you know, here I am, I'm kind of living this solo poly life of, you know, super deep connection, but there's an end date. And so, but then I, I just kind of am looking back and the most recent partner being much more serious and it was, mm. it was, you know, it changed a lot for me. It changed my life. Yeah. And um, yeah. And then looking at that, it's like, oh, actually, before him was, you know, the other, you know, the last, the one before him, and the one before him, it's like, they all mm. kind of linked with, I actually left each relation, each one, and to be with the next one. And it got wow. more intense and more beautiful with each one. And like, I love them all so much, like so much in my heart. But it's like, looking back and realizing, like, oh, actually, when have I really been truly single, like single me, just me? Here. yeah you know actually I haven't spent a lot of my time like that ever yeah in my life you know and when I was it was always longing looking and that is the natural state I think of women because yeah. of nature to 
find a man who will protect us and to support us and provide for us it's still in our nature to be that Mm -hmm. way as much as we want to be these big strong women and do all the things ourselves it is our nature that we want a man and we want to be taken care of yeah you know but also beautiful to know that we can we can do that without uh without being in a relationship and like i you know i'm able to find ways and and practice being irresistible with men all the time letting a man hold the door open for me who i don't even know or Mm. letting my friends come over with their loop stations and like they went all out for me to go and pick up speakers and like make it happen and just like showing them how much i appreciate them for for doing that for me and like that kind of thing right and just like having male connection and and nurturing that give and take relationship that men and women need to have yeah without sex without relation without uh you know intimate intimate uh, romantic relationship it's like that's powerful to tap into that and that absolutely with, with whoever and everyone and it sh- and it really like brings out more irresistibility in yeah you as i do that yeah mm. so much there oh my goodness yeah. um if you have something to add, that's you can go right ahead. Otherwise, I have I have other questions that I want to ask. You. Uh, so. No, I just I just um, I can just back a lot of what you're saying, especially with the a woman's innate longing. Like as women, it's it's not just with men and romantic relationships. Like as women, we are always longing for more. That is our nature. It's like we are this void and it's not something that is respected I guess or like seen as how do I word this like we're always looking for more that's life that's literally the ecosystem that's our planetary consciousness it's always looking for this cycle of life death life death like how can I take this and break it down and then regenerate an entire forest for you know forest or planetary whatever how can I birth something more beautiful how can I add more how can I rebirth it into a whole new culture a whole new idea a whole new whatever it may be and that's just literally why we're alive we're alive to create life so that longing um, is just like so primordial to us. And I feel like, yeah, there's there's a beauty. I often tell my clients like there's a beauty in um, honoring our longings and tending to the longing. Like it's not like just cut off the desire to have a partner, cut off the desire to have sacred union. It's like, let yourself feel that, you know, maybe it's like once a day you're like, oh, like I'm longing for a frequency of love I've never known yet. And I'm so committed to that coming into my life and I know it's coming and I'm going to just in this moment, like melt for it, like froth, just like mm, feel it. And then I'm going to proceed and work on my business or go to work or like whatever it may be. Like it's not Mm -hmm. cutting one out to have the other. It's like, Oh, I'm going to like let this longing even like pour into my passion project or pour into whatever it may be and yeah honoring it oh mm. um, said that so well like I really felt that in my felt that in my in my body in my womb oh, yeah Come same on. yeah yeah <laughs> so powerful feeling and you know feeling that love and even just just watching you explain it listening to you and you explaining like that love I've never known before it's something I think about every day yeah. and you know as women we probably all think about this every day and I know men that also think about this a lot like Absolutely. you know about like where, who's that person going to be for oh, me yeah and it's such a beautiful feeling and it doesn't need to be this you know because I know that I'm not as much as I am longing for it I don't want that right now anyways it's not the time for me I know that right and it is a powerful yeah. thing to to know how how excited I am for that and yet mm. I'm not rushing I'm not rushing yeah, because the more right the more I go into my own process and and in just keep going so deep into this spiritual inner journey within myself it's only going to raise the standard of the kind of man and the kind of men I'm attracting in my life it only gets better over time absolutely like, right and I'm sure you notice this so it's like well let's keep going then like 
my mom my mom's mantra is show me how good this gets yeah. show me how good this gets god uh you know it's like let's see how good this can get and it's like if this is as good as it gets that's incredible because I never thought it could get this good right yeah and uh so I really felt what you said there and like just feeling that love and not feeling ashamed that I want it it's like mm-hmm. no that love is everything that's the womb wisdom right there like Absolutely. feeling that that longing you have that I have for for companionship and and all and and love true mm. romantic love is that is what the womb is that's the vibration that it comes yeah, from right? it is love yeah mm-hmm. and having like having reverence and gratitude for all the ones that have come before like I think that's a big part on the womb path like it's a common thing where women come for womb healing or womb work womb ceremony because they're releasing past partners they're releasing whatever is being held in the womb and a big part of that I feel like is actually coming to terms with what we were shown in the past partners as we're like longing for that new love and longing for you know how can I get better also paying our respect to what was and really honoring that like law of nature of like this completed and what did I learn here so I'm not bringing it towards my la- my next relationship I'm not leaving this in my womb like actually acknowledging it and letting it mm-hmm. letting it be behind and or transform into what we not ne- we next long for just wanted mm-hmm. to add that in with the relational stuff we're speaking to as well yeah mm-hmm. yeah thank you I think it's super important because of the energy transfer when we're having sex right I'm really seeing it that way is I I'm very careful with the exchange of energy when you know I'm thinking about when I'm okay I'm seeing this person who I know I'm going to be uh you know sexually intimate with and so like being aware of okay I do I want to have sexual partners in between now and then because that changes something and there's an openness and it's okay to be doing this it's like but what what is the impact of doing that uh, yeah. on the relationship on the other person because there's an energy <clears throat> transfer there and yeah. uh and I need to be honest about it too because uh it it makes a difference right it also makes yeah. a difference like if you're wearing a condom if you're not like who is the person what's going on and like there's so much there and each person mm. and I had a woman remind me this recently of like you know because she could see that I'm a really trusting person and she's like good keep that and just you know be careful who you share your energy with right and yeah. she could just see it in me that, you know, you trust people. And actually, it was like a message from from God recently that I've had. I've been on a real spiritual journey, like in the last mm. recently, very recently. Oh, yeah. I've Important. been, yeah, yeah. It's been channeling a lot. And one of the things was be careful who you're trusting. Like your trust, yeah. Don't trust as many people as you've been trusting. You're okay. the you're the gatekeeper of your field, right? And it's mm. like you have to, we have to govern our own energy and that's a big thing I I learned in my like earlier like I'm, I'm learning it now from like the past of like wow I was so available in my, like in my early 20s I was like wow I was just like a yes woman like a yes man but a yes woman I was just like yeah sure let's do that let's explore and it's like yeah like you're saying it's like being mindful what we're trusting what we're open to we govern we govern our what comes in and what goes out and that's like a responsibility that's a beautiful mm-hmm. thing when we get to really attune to like ooh, I actually don't want that but I do want that and there's space for that because I said no to that and it's like mm. yeah we are the cervix yeah. we are the cervix so yes I, you know yes, the nice. gatekeeper, <laughs> that doorway it's not coming in it is coming in <laughs> yeah <laughs> wow isn't that beautiful how Mm. that comes back we come back to that because I really loved the way that you painted the picture of the the cervix is the gatekeeper of the womb yeah and we are the gatekeepers of our souls of our of our precious energy and wow okay so this is awesome. <laughs> so good. Yeah, I really appreciate you for extracting this juice and mm. for us to be to be co-creating this. This conversation is just really uplifting my soul. 
and uh, I have I have more topics I want to get into but I'm kind of I'm feeling into it right now and I'm feeling like we could go forever <laughs> yeah yeah we can um, narrow it down <laughs> and also like the the topics that I you know I I'll mention them and I don't know if I if I want to get into them now one I also have a dinner that that I'm probably going to be late for and it's worth it yeah for. Like, I'm not in any rush to end this necessarily, but I feel like the opening these topics, it might go for a while and it could be a whole other episode. It could be yeah. a bath, could be a bath episode. There we go. <laughs> Part two. I'm yeah. super down. Yeah. Yeah. I think that just like, I also feel that letting this all land without putting too much more information into it can actually be a lot more beneficial because there's so much here that we just talked about. So much. And- yeah. So, uh, yeah, I would love to have you on again and to talk about more. Some of the things I wrote down, I'm just going to just yeah them out right now and then we can, we can bring it in another time. When you mentioned in the beginning, you were mentioning about like feminine uh, mythology and cosmology. Mm. I have, I have not a lot of information on that. And I would love to learn more about that from you and, yeah. uh, and, uh, um, oh, what was the other uh, sexual sexual shamanism and your journey through that like I want to hear more about yeah. your sexual journey for sure and uh I also wanted to bring up two-way prayer I wrote that down why did I write down two-way ah two-way prayer I'll just something that I wanted to say personally is like I have been practicing two-way prayer and this is where these channeling of God has been coming through um with some assistance from DMT you know that's a whole other thing mm-hmm. but uh two-way prayer like having a conversation with god and like being i am god and i'm also me which is i am god and that's how i see it anyways right so i'm literally having a conversation with god through my own body and through my own hand it down it's been really powerful really powerful and imagining that i'm imagining that with the womb yeah i'm asking asking yeah it's actually a practice we've done in wise womb ways well not not so specifically but um we do journaling yeah, I guess it is the same thing. We do journal from the womb. So I, I say, let's descend from the mind. We'll go into like a woman embodiment journey or a somatic journey. And we're just really feeling the felt sense in the body and moving around. And um, and then journaling from the womb, you know? So it's like, just leave the mind, not try and operate from the mind or overthink it with a logical mind, but like, just like writing, channeling the next thing, the next thing, what you're feeling, um, in the womb and yeah that is actually a practice with the womb so that's super cool that connection yeah oh thanks thanks for that uh easter egg sneak peek into it and then we can yeah. oh, anyone <laughs> listening give it a try I'm gonna give that a try for sure um, absolutely yeah thank you and uh yeah so I, we're gonna meet again we're gonna talk more about about mm-hmm. all of this uh right now uh if there's anything you feel is alive for you that you want to share if you feel like just to to feel complete with this and that and also i would love to hear you know of course at the end you can share your your information your instagram mm-hmm. uh, i don't even share my name <laughs> I, I i called you brit i actually don't even know how to say okay, your last cool. name i called you brit okay. but yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, I, I said it's it. french Guimont. Brittany Guimont. yeah oh, uh, beautiful yeah it's like did I even introduce myself (laughs) with my name (laughs) yeah yeah well my intro for you was so so long that there was like yeah it was just like a you know I kind of like it though that might be how I do it with guests now I I do like like start off by like hey here's how you change my life okay I'm gonna go on for 10 minutes and now you can go (laughs) I find though like I love speaking in a more experiential way and being like I am this and that and like just to give someone a felt sense of who you really are like who another person is I think it's really impactful mm, yeah yeah thank you um yeah so whatever's alive for you if you ever if you want to to share any closing thoughts if you have any otherwise you can just jump into your information and also you had some book recommendations for us which yeah, I, uh, I do have to write down yeah um any closing thoughts I mean so much was touched and covered on this podcast today I feel like what I'd love to share is just for any woman listening and men and, you know, all beings, but like specifically for women with the womb, it's like, if you're feeling called to deepen with the womb and your body and your feminine power, 
there's not like a right way to get there. There's not like, you don't have to look a certain way or wear a certain kind of outfit or like have the right this, that. Um, it's such an internal personal journey. And I just, yeah, I just recommend, I just invite to get curious, keep it simple, really connect hands on the womb, hands on the heart in the morning breathe into the depth of the womb let that breath really let the blood flow and the space in the pelvic bowl open up and just like see how much will become available the more that you deepen um, and get curious like really just breathing in and feeling that potency especially in the morning when the subconscious mind is really online um, and yeah let it let her call you let her kind of summon you into your womb path um and if you desire to deepen in a health space and be guided i do womb mentorship and mentorship at whole with women um where that is kind of like being an apprentice of your own womb and having a mentor support and guide you in the process so i offer all kinds of practices coaching parts work inner work um guided journeys and really um like an ally walking with you on your path of soul and womb and feminine embodiment and it's like my favorite thing one-on-one -on -one work it's like my bread and butter I deeply love one-on-one -on -one work and if you like group work I also hold a cohort called wise womb ways I hold it twice a year and I'm starting the next journey in about a month We'll be going through the elements of the womb every week and touching on different themes uh, around womb cosmology, womb wisdom, embodiment, different practices like yoni gazing, womb massage, um, meditations, vagal sounding, so connecting the voice in the womb and all these different practices to, yeah, really fortify a relationship with that feminine central channel. So... Um, and my Instagram is Feminine Origins, and you can learn a lot more about my body of work over there. Yeah, and I'm also starting a podcast one of these days. It's been like a big, Yay. big, big prayer in my heart, and I feel like I got to get on that soon. Mm. I'm sure. Yeah, I'd love to have you on there. Oh, you thank you. Yeah, I would love to be on there. And I, if you need any uh, support on on making this happen, definitely ask. Like, let me know. I'd love to support yes. you in, in getting this going. It's actually having a podcast is not hard, even though I've been making it harder myself lately. <laughs> it's not hard. It's not a lot of work. You know, if you want to put in an hour a week, you're good. You know. Yeah. And thank so if you. you. Yeah. Let me know. I'd love to support you in in getting that started and. Um, uh, and I because I'm in support of it you you would make a great yeah. podcast host yeah mm. you, beautiful way of Thank speaking you. I'm so grateful that you took this time to share with us this wow. wisdom it's so Deep pleasure I yeah it it's so, so special yeah yeah it's I'm truly beautiful. grateful yeah grateful to know you and uh just so, excited to see you again so glad you came in that last like 10 to 15 minutes of the <laughs> ceremony oh my gosh yeah so special do you, I honestly feel like you always get exactly what you need even if it's like the last you know bit of like you catch a word in passing mm. or life is just so loving like that mm. yeah exactly it's exactly what it what it is you know and I was like my intention going into that festival was I want to feel I want to feel something because I was mm. not feeling I was not feeling the, yeah. the emotions that I felt I should be feeling in that moment I wasn't feeling sad like I was going through I, I wasn't feeling grief when I sh felt mm. I should have been. I was going through a breakup. Like a freeze. Like, on the yeah, I wasn't, I was, you know, the breakup and the, you yeah. know, the surgery. It's like, why am I not feeling anything? I'm feeling totally fine. And I just really felt like there was something blocked in me. And then just getting to go into that space, it was like, oh, I really felt the absence in my womb that just kind of, wow, it really led into me mm. feeling a lot. I felt a lot that weekend and it was really powerful. Yeah. So, Yeah. So forever grateful for you. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me on this You're today. You're so welcome. Lovely. Esther. 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. If you want to just send me the the books, I could just link oh, them. Yes, you don't even need yes. to to Well, I, there's one that I definitely here. would recommend. Um yeah. and it's Womb Awakening by Ser- Serene and Ezra Bertrand and it is incredible. It's like a Bible. I love I love it so much. I teach with it. There's so much in there. And there's a lot of um, mythology and cosmology in those words I was speaking to at the beginning. Mm-hmm. Another really powerful book. Oh uh, yeah, I'll show them. They could be here for a while. <laughs> yeah, sure. That would be Some great. Good ones. Yeah. Okay, I'll, that'd be I'll awesome. Yeah. To you. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh. Uh, so lovely to connect with you. And you. uh yeah, let's stay connected. I'm here for you. Yeah. And uh lovely. Yeah, send Enjoy me so much dinner. love. Thank that, you. That womb, that womb beyond, that womb energy Ooh. with you. <laughs> yes. Hell yeah. <laughs> that womb yes or that womb no, but you're ordering, <laughs> you know, let it lead you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Boom kisses. Boom kisses. I'll see you soon. Okay. Goodbye, sister. Thank you so much.